Hey guys, it's Daniel. Jim Morrison's most famous relationship was his longtime on again, off again relationship with girlfriend Pamela Corson. Though, of course, this was far from his only relationship. As a matter of fact, Jim Morrison was actually married. In January of 1969, Jim Morrison was interviewed by Patricia Kennelly, the editor in chief of Jazz and Pop magazine in New York City. They eventually became a couple, and in June of 1970, they were married. Their marriage was a long distance one, with Jim being in Los Angeles and Patricia in New York. Despite the marriage, Jim continued to be with other women, as Patricia discusses in a quote I'm going to share with you. Though the two never officially divorced, they had broken up several months before Jim's death in July of 1971. In the following quote, Patricia discusses the last time she saw Jim Morrison, which was in February of 1971 in Los Angeles. In this story, Patricia ends up beating up another girl who was after Jim Morrison. Quote, I went to a recording session with my girlfriend, with whom I have been staying, and she made a play for Jim. I said, Oh, that's a no no. Wait until I leave. I don't care what you do, but not in front of me, please. I didn't care what Jim did. He was a complete polygamist, but she was really drunk, and Jim was easily lured away. She went to the bathroom, and five minutes later, Jim left. I found them embracing outside on the lawn. I walked over and said, Get up. Jim was smiling. He thought it was funny. I said, Come on up, both of you, up. But instead, the girl reaches up and pulls me down. I say, Let me talk to him by myself. She went away. And he said, Listen, you know, I'm too drunk to do anything tonight. Just let me be with her. I said, Look, it's my last night in LA. I'm going home tomorrow, and I'll probably never see you again. He said, Well, I'm not going to spend another night with you. And I said, Fine with me. But you're not going to spend it with her either. He got disgusted and went inside. And she came over and I said, I'm going to break your neck. She said, Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. It's not my fault. Then we go to a bar where Jim tells her I'm a frustrated lesbian and I go bananas. Absolutely bananas. We went back to her house and had a scene in the bathroom where I told her to cool it. And she said, Well, you've always known how fond I was of him. And I said, You jerk. You always told me it was the singer Chris Christofferson you were after. She then pushed me backwards and I fell into the bathtub. I got out of the tub, grabbed her by her hair, and slammed her into the side of the sink. I was going for her eyes when Morrison came in saying, Now, ladies. We left the bathroom and Jim started going through all the drawers in the apartment. We asked him what he was looking for, and he said, Oh, I'm looking for knives and scissors, so you can't castrate me. We were flabbergasted. We didn't know what to do, so we watched him gather up all the sharp things in the house and put them under the couch. Then he laid on the couch and said he didn't think he had anything to do with the whole thing. He said he thought it was between us two, and then he passed out. She suggested we go outside to talk so we wouldn't wake him up, then proposed we share him so we could keep him from the groupies and those who didn't really care for him. I saw red. I've never been that angry. It was like looking through red cellophane. I screamed, I'm going to kill you. I grabbed her, threw her down the stairs, gave her a couple of punches, threw her up against the wall, and she said, I don't want to fight you. I said, Fight or I'll kill you. So she gave me a powder puff punch, and I went into a real rage, giving her a karate number with my foot in her stomach. Then I started punching her in the face, and finally, I went away. Just like that. It was over, and I was drained. I told her to take me to the airport, and I got on a plane to New York that morning. End quote. The following is another quote from Patricia where she discusses a conversation she had with Pamela Corson, Jim Morrison's longtime on again, off again girlfriend. In December of 1970, Patricia visited Los Angeles and stayed with Diane Gardner, the Doors publicist and a friend of the band. Diane was living at the time below Jim and Pam's apartment. Upon arriving in Los Angeles in December of 1970, Patricia left a message for Jim at the Doors office. Quote, Jim called half an hour later. Pam was upstairs at the time. The doors were recording LA Woman, and he asked me to come to the session. I said, recording sessions bore me, so why not come here? He said, okay, and didn't show up. I didn't hear from him for three or four days. I was at home alone. The phone rings, and it's some girl calling for Pam. Jim and Pam didn't have a phone. So I got Pam, and I said, I met you once at the Hilton in New York, and we had dinner with some people. Pam was really stoned and said, Yeah, whatever happened to that chick, Pat Kennedy, Pat Connolly? I said, Pamela, that's me. 
We ended up talking for three hours and got really stoned and drunk and things got said. There were no ill feelings. It was very lovely and very weird.